In this tutorial, I am going to teach you to make this Tron Legacy Derez effect in Blender. First, the character and animation I am using is from Mixamo. For this you will need a death animation. When you search for death you will get a bunch of random animated death poses. I will be using this one named Dying. You can adjust the settings until you find a speed you like or you can just copy mine. Once you are happy with the settings, just click download. Leave the file type on FBX. Change the frames per second to 60 and set the keyframe reduction to uniform. Download the character with animation and go to Blender. In Blender, delete the default cube and import your character. Hit the play button to make sure that the animation speed is right for your animation. Pull the timeline up to see better and then move the keyframes to give yourself more time before the animation starts. Make a torus move on the and timeline change the to minor where the animation to begins a higher playing. number like 0.6 and scale it down on the z-axis until it is a disc. Scale the disc down until it looks about the right size. Move it up to the point of impact on your character. Go to the first frame on the timeline and move the disc away from your character. Keyframe its location and go to the end of the timeline. Move the disc to the other size of the character and keyframe its new location. On the timeline go to the point of impact and move the second disc's keyframe back until the disc is at the impact point at the right frame. Hit play and make sure it looks right. Create a plane and scale it up to be the floor. This will be the floor collision. Duplicate the floor and move it down a little. Scale it up a little to see it below the floor. Move the camera to about where you want it. You may need to move it again later. Select your character and go to the Shader tab. Move the principled BSDF away from the output to make room. Add a mix shader and a transparent shader. Make sure the transparent is plugged into the bottom input. Add a texture coordinate and mapping node. In the viewport, Add an empty object and move it to the impact point on your character. Plug the object into the vector input and select the empty as the object. Now add a gradient texture. Plug the mapping output into the gradient and change the gradient from linear to quadratic sphere. Plug the gradient into the factor of the mix shader. Add a color ramp between the gradient and mix shader. Set it to constant and adjust the white until an area of the character is invisible. Duplicate the color ramp and move it to below the gradient. Plug the gradient into it and change the color ramp to linear. Plug the color ramp into the emission color and move the black and white values until the emission is only visible along the edge of the transparent. If you are using this character or any character with separate parts, you will need to select all the parts from this material and copy paste them into all the separate materials. Return to the Layout tab and change to the Material Preview. Select the Empty and go to the Constraints tab, add a Child of Constraint and select the Armature as the Target and Spine 2 as the Bone. Turn off the Rotation Tracking and move the Empty back to where it should be.
once it is in the right spot, scale it down on the z-axis to be around the same size as the disc. Keyframe the scale and move back to before the impact and set the scale as zero. Move through the timeline and keyframe the empty's location, rotation, and scale to make the character become completely invisible. Now select the character and duplicate it, move it to the left or right out of the way from the first character. Join all of the separate parts and remove all materials. Make a new material and set it to emission. In the shading tab add a mix shader and a glass BSDF. Change the IOR of the glass to 9.45 and the emission strength to 5. It should look like this. Now be sure to name this character inside. This will be important if you need to find it later. Go to Modifiers and add a Remesh modifier. Set it to Blocks and put the Octree Depth to 5. Go into Edit Mode and select a part of your character, separate that part by Selected and go out of Edit Mode. This will be how the whole character will look. Select both parts and join them back together. Turn off the viewport display for the remesh to see the character properly. Select the character and move the cursor to selected. Add another empty. Make sure to use the sphere empty. Move the empty up to around the impact point. Go to the geometry nodes tab and hit new. Move the group input to the left to make room. Add a mesh boolean and drop it between the input and output, drag your empty from the outliner and set it behind the boolean. Plug the object into the second group input. Now add an ICO sphere node and a transform geometry. Plug the mesh into the geometry and connect the location, rotation and scale. Plug the transform geometry into the mesh too. Check the whole tolerant box and change the object info to relative. Your character should now look like this. Turn on the viewport display for the remesh modifier and move it below the geometry nodes modifier. This will keep it blocky. Select the first empty and go back to before the animation starts and move the cursor to select it. Select the sphere empty and move it to the cursor. While still selected on the sphere empty, go into constraints and add a child of constraint. Set the first empty as the target. Turn off the scale on the constraint and move the sphere empty back to the position of the other empty. Now move the second character back into the first and turn on the viewport display for the armature. Go into edit mode, select all the smaller parts, in this case the fingers and delete them. Do Alt S to scale the parts down then separate by loose parts. Now look around your character and find any parts of blocks sticking out of them, select those parts and in edit mode, scale them down with individual origins so you can do them all at once. Once all the internal parts are no longer visible, reselect the sphere empty and apply the scale. This will mess up the geometry node's effect but it can be fixed in a moment. Move on the timeline to the second keyframe of the first empty, copy its scale and paste it into the sphere, keyframe the sphere scale. Do the same for every keyframe on the first empty, at each keyframe copy the scale and paste it into the sphere and keyframe the scale.
Now return to the Geometry Nodes tab. In the Outliner search for the name of the second character and select one of the parts. Once the nodes are visible, go to the ICO sphere and lower the radius until the glow is visible again and even with the rest of the effect. It should look something like this. The remesh modifier can be laggy sometimes so select the second character's parts and join them back together. Once joined, move the second character back out of the first. Disable the viewport display of the geometry nodes and remesh, this will let you keep working without the lag. Now select one of the empties and move on the timeline to the second keyframe, set cursor to selected and add a plane. Rotate the plane 90 degrees on the x-axis and scale it down on the z-axis until it is the same height as the hole in the character, scale it on the x-axis until it looks good to you. Now add a cube and move it out of the scene. Make a new material and set it to emission. Set the strength to 5. Return to the plane, add a particle system to the plane. Under render, Change it from Halo to Object and select the cube as the instance. Set the frame start and end to the frame where the disk impacts the character. Now select the disk and add collision to it. This will let it strike the cubes. Now select the top floor and add collision to it. Check the box next to Kill Particles. Go back to the Particle Settings. Under Render. Under Extra, turn on Dead so the dead particles will be visible. Now look at the Velocity setting, 3 above Render. Increase Object Velocity to 1 and raise the randomization up until you like the way the cubes fall. Raise the floor up until it is right under the cubes and adjust the size of the cubes until you like the size. While selected on the collision floor, make a transparent material for it. Select the armature and move it down a little so it does not look like it is floating. Now, select the plane with the particle system, duplicate it and rotate it 90 degrees on the x-axis. Move on the timeline to just after the impact and move the plane down. Scale the plane up to fill the character and keyframe its location, rotation, and scale. Find the frame where the lower torso is no longer visible and move the plane to that point. Rotate it to match the direction of the body and keyframe it again. In the particle settings, Click the copy button next to the particle name so you can edit it without affecting the first particle system. Now change the start frame to one frame after the impact and set the end frame to the plane's second keyframe. Now move on the timeline between those two frames and make sure the plane is in sync with the transparent. Move the plane up or down with the animation and keyframe its position, rotation, and scale. Make sure to set the lifetime on both particle systems to be longer than your animation. Select the plane and duplicate it, this time move it above the impact point, do the same process for this part, move it up and keyframe it at specific points to keep it in sync. It does not need to be perfect. 
make sure you click the copy button on the particle system before changing any of the settings. Follow this process for the head, arms, and legs. If the cubes start getting in the way, you can hide the particle systems until you are done. Once you have finished, make a transparent material and add it to all of the planes with particle systems. Unhide any hidden particle systems. Select the emission character and turn the modifiers back on. Move it back into the first character and in edit mode, separate it by loose parts. Go into the compositing tab and check the use node box, go to add, and under filter, add the glare node and drop it between the render layers and composite nodes. Change streaks to fog glow, change the mix to 0.1 and the threshold to 0.9, raise the size to 9 and change medium to high. Now back in the layout, under the viewport shading you can change the compositor from disable to always, now you can see the glow. If you render it right now you will likely get something like this. To prevent this, you first need to scale up the empties at their last keyframe to make sure they cover the whole character and re-keyframe them. Now go to the particle settings and find the tab named cache. Open this tab and bake all of your particle systems. This will make them behave properly.